All right, so unless you really have been living under a rock, you will know that it's UK National Hill Climb Champs this Sunday, the 25th of October. And as always, well, two years, we're going to give you a preview. So this is the climb, average gradient 13%, distance 750 metres. Look at the course profile, not very steep at the beginning, ramps up to about 20% for a significant proportion of about 400 metres or so, 300 metres, and then uh, flattens off towards the top. So there was a test event here earlier in the year. Cam Biddle does have the king of the mountain. Um, he did it in 208, and I think it, it's a really fast time. Uh, very, very quick, uh, 12 seconds faster than anyone else, really. Um, the numbers the man does, unfortunately, doesn't have a power meter this year, but 21k an hour is absolutely mental. The VAM is close to 3,000, which I don't think I've ever seen in my life before. So he's definitely going to be a man to watch. We'll move on to him in a minute. Love him some kudos, be rude not to. Um, but yeah, I think definitely the course record was set by Cam Biddle, and I think he's got to be a big contender. We'll go through a couple others. I will say before I go through everyone, I can't go through everyone. There are so many people. A lot of people in lockdown as well up north, so they can't turn up. It's a bit of a shame that, to be honest, because not much for nationals. But we'll go through a couple of people I've uh, messaged and, you know, why I think they're going to go well. A couple of people have uh, given me, you know, what they think is going to go down. So number one, we've got Andrew Feather, obviously one in 2018 on a similar hill climb. Uh, it was Peroid Lane. Uh, he got, did that in two minutes, 15. So slightly shorter, potentially sub two minutes, maybe for the win. Um, but you can see it from his results. He's won every single one that he's done in 2020, uh, which is obviously unbelievable. Um, he was saying he's changed his bars a little bit. He's gone wider, 42s this year, um, prefers that out the saddle. Um, MCFK, super lightweight bike, um, says training's been pretty much better because of lockdown. Uh, obviously, doesn't have to commute to work, so he's saying he's done a bit more efforts. Um, he did a VM2 max test, which is like 81 or something, um, which is pretty incredible. So we'll go over to his numbers. Um, which some people say might be a little bit high. I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. Um, they could be, but I think this this Ryber Hill climb is quite interesting. So it's basically pretty flat at the beginning, only 6%, so 540 watts. And there's literally a downhill part. So um, Andrew didn't didn't ride very hard here, like 18 seconds recovery at 400. And this last part, I think, is very interesting to see how much punch Andrew Feather has. And he still managed to do nine more speedo for the last two minutes of the climb, um, which I think shows that He's definitely still got a massive punch even after the effort, but we'll go to an even better climb. This is Jenny Cliff. It's down in Plymouth. I was thinking of making the trap and I realised I actually have uni the next day and probably should do some uni work. But anyway, this is a very similar climb, I guess, in terms of length. Obviously, in terms of gradient, quite different, 7%. Um, but 10 watts per kilo is pretty much what you need to do for 10 minutes to win, which is absolutely bonkers. Uh, maybe, you know, on different power meters, some will be nine and a half or whatever, because power meters never read perfectly. Um, that's just one thing it is. But I think here um, it's pretty incredible um, numbers. And I think 10 watts per kilo is really very impressive from Andrew Feller. Um, so I think that's going to be, he's definitely going to be one of the uh, men, to be, uh, men to watch. Next is my old coach, Tom Bell, an absolute legend of the sport, uh, professional mountain biker, but he's been whacking hill climbs. He's finally got a bike that's actually light. It's like a five and a half kilo bike. Before, he used to do all climbs like eight kilo bikes and still whack everyone. Um, but now he's on a super light bike. This is one of the shorter climbs he did, which is a was kilo for three minutes 20, which is very, very solid. Um, but he did a one minute test today um, to empty the W prime, which is a classic little sports science term. Love to see it. Um, it's like your anaerobic workload. Um, and he did 11.6 watts per kilo for a minute today, uh, which again is like pretty, what was it? ridiculous numbers but it's also pretty interesting because obviously this climb is short so you think he's doing you know close to 12 watts per kilo for a minute then you know hopefully for two minutes he could hold close to 10 and then he's going to win so i think looking at his results um all round for tom bell um they were they've been pretty good to be honest um he did get beaten by feather up cleveland wheelers but uh, tom did say to me they didn't have a great day that day um and that he's saying he's done a lot of training specifically for this Often he said he just did hill climbs, not maybe focusing as much, but he said that this time he really concentrated on it and really, um, you know, was, I mean, I guess focused a lot more on it because there's no other races going on. Um, but, you know, won a fair few events. I think he said he would prefer longer. And I think a lot of people are saying that there's no one really I've seen is like, I really want it. Obviously, Callum Brown probably would do. Um, but unfortunately, I'm pretty sure he's getting locked down. So the lab won't be able to turn up. But I'm not not 100 sure what the deal is. CTT are being a bit a bit weird of it. Um, but yeah, I think uh, Tom Bell's definitely going to be one to watch. And then obviously we've got Cam Biddle. I'm not really going to go through Strava because 
doesn't have power meter, unfortunately, so there's no real point. Um, but his results all round have been really, really solid. Um, and I'll go through a couple other people I think can do well. Um, obviously, I can't go through everyone. But unfortunately, Cam Biddle has been racing a lot with Andrew Feather, hence the number of reasons, n number of uh, podium places. But he did win on Bank Road the other day. And that is a really, really short climb. Obviously, the Nationals climb was longer, but he beat Andy Nichols. So I think all these people um, will be serious contenders, any of the top like couple, especially Andy Nichols. But I'm not sure Genny from Sheffield, is he going to be allowed to ride? And Kieran Smith, I think, is a shout for the juniors. Um, there's also a lad near us called Tom Williams, and he's pretty rapid as well. So I reckon he, he'll go well. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think Cam Biddle winning that as well as having the the course record is, uh, you know, obviously a strong indication that he's going to go well um so i think those three are going to be the, the three i'm really going to watch obviously lavas can't do it um but we'll go through a couple other people now uh there's a lot of people earlier starters um who we're not going to go through um there's me somewhere as well uh i'm not going to win it surprise surprise um <laughs> but uh carl jolly rides for my uni he's had very good hill climb season won a lot of events um i think he's going to go really well my mate tom arkell as well i don't want to big him up but i think i think he could go well uh, Harvey Weinberg, he won Bucks Hill Climb last year, so he'll probably go out. Gildares looked so-so, didn't look top-top in uh, Bank Road. Annie Cunningham's always decent. I mean, it's the usual sort of names. Adam Kenway's got a very odd bike, but apparently it's quite light. It's like six kilos, I think, or something. He always goes well on the short stuff. He won up Bank Road in, what was it, 2016, was it, I think? Um, so, potentially, he'll go well. I haven't really seen too much from him. Callum Brown would obviously be my favourite. If he's going to race, I think he will be a definite favourite and could win, but I wasn't 100% sure. The numbers the man does are absolutely ridiculous. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts um, for the men's National Hill Climb Champs. I think it's basically going to be 10 watts per kilo for two minutes like Peroid. Um, it's going to be absolutely mental. The thing they all said to me was that tyre pressure could be really um, use, uh, like critical because it's supposed to be wet on the day and it's steep. And apparently, um, Andrew Feather said he did it a couple of years ago and quite a lot of tyre slippage um, because it's so steep. However, having said that, the road surface is horrendous. So when the road surface is actually horrendous, sometimes... It's so bad, actually. It's quite a lot of grip, so it's quite grippy. Um, but I haven't actually ridden the climb yet, which, which is probably not ideal. Um, I also did get told that Andrew Feather did a re recon, well, he, he told me. Um, it wasn't like I got told um, on Strava. Uh, he says he hasn't uploaded it yet. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. He said Campbell's time is pretty far, so maybe didn't be him. Maybe he doesn't have pressure. No one was going, people I talked to, no one was really going out and saying they're going to win it. Um, but, yeah, those are my thoughts. Obviously, let me know yours in the description below. All right. All right, so now we're going to go through the women's. It's obviously the same course. Um, and the QOM, Emma Grant doesn't seem to be racing. Neither is Mary Seneca. Bitha Jones, um, she looked pretty good, actually, to be fair. Got a fair few um, course records and stuff. But we'll look at the first person with power to sort of see the numbers. More or less, you need to do. Um, this is Alice Lethbridge. Uh, she did 6.3 watts per kilo for three minutes, which is sort of what I expect. But I reckon on the day, we're going to get some more watts per kilo. Um, but, yeah, I've talked to a couple of people and um, seen what everyone's thinking about the climb um so the first person we're going to go off is scratch uh scratch ride which is mary wilkinson she's last off um she didn't start any of the hill climbs on the weekend like ryber or matlock but she's done pretty well and this is to be fair this is where the ctc website is completely useless because you have no idea if someone if she's won it or not because she comes 17th but that includes blokes so that's useless um but if we go over to her numbers um they're quite interesting uh and we can we'll be able to see some of them oh yeah, so this is um, Tick Hill uh, Bib Lane. Uh, it's quite a short hill climb, but I think going through and uh, analysing the short ones is, is quite interesting. So you can see for a minute and 20, she's doing eight and a half watts per kilo, which is huge. Um, I think on the day, it will be maybe two and a half minutes is my prediction uh, for the woman. Two minutes, 40 maybe. Um, so, you know, that's probably going to be about seven and a, seven, seven and a half watts per kilo would be my prediction. Um, maybe about seven, I'd say, um, for the climb. So obviously doing eight and a half for one minute 20 is pretty, pretty impressive. Um, very anaerobic, obviously, like, you know, the longer you're going to get, you're not going to be able to sustain that. It's going to be da uh, downward trajectory. Uh, but even so, pretty incredible. Uh, and if we look at car lane, which is slightly longer, so obviously between the two of these, um, we should be able to sort of figure out what should we do six and a half watts per kilo for three minutes 40. So then you sort of average those out, do a little bit of maths in your brain and think Mary's Wilkinson is going to be on it. Because she, if she can do six and a half for close to four minutes, then, you know, for a two, three minute, like two and a half, three minute climb, then for sure she's going to be doing at least seven watts per kilo. Um, so I think that's, you know, pretty strong indication um, that she's definitely going to go very well. 
uh, in the race. I think she's won. I think she assumes she won both of those. Um, but again, with the CTT website, it's quite hard to uh, figure that out. Um, so the, the next person we'll, we'll, we're going to go on to is Kate McTeer, local rider from Bristol. Um, she's done pretty well this year. A couple top threes, a couple top twos. Um, she's mainly a triathlete, um, but does really enjoy the punchy ones. Um, she only got power me uh, the last couple of days, um, but the numbers have been pre looking pretty good, like six and a half watts per kilo for two minutes, um, sort of doing intervals and stuff. So that's pretty solid. Seven watts per kilo here for a minute. Um, if we look on the side here with the Stravistics for 380 watts, she's doing seven watts per kilo for two minutes, close to. So that's pretty impressive. Um, I think the power me is four eyes, so can read a little bit low, I've heard. But yeah, I think she's getting the QM up here is a pretty good indication that Kate's on form. Kate came third in 2018 at National Hill Climb Champs. Um, so it's obviously someone to definitely watch. Um, and, you know, it's trained pretty hard. I think recently it's trained quite hard for it. Um, whacked everyone else on the segment for sure. Um, so I think she's definitely one to watch. Uh, and obviously, you know, pretty experienced in terms of the fact she's already done that. Again, um, it's hard to see from the CTT websites, but I believe Kate came third on uh, Belmont Hill Climb, which is slightly longer, maybe maybe a, a minute longer. Um, then we go to Bexy Jew, who's had an outrageous season. She's won every single hill climb she's entered, I believe. Um, she was saying that her, the first hill climb she did of the year was um, the same one I actually did. It was... Uh, and she did the first hill climb of the year she did was um Dursley, uh, which she did 300 watts at like 49 kilos or something, which is like well over six watts per kilo, which was to be fair enough to win nationals back in 2017. Um, so I think she's definitely one to watch. Um, unfortunately, she doesn't have a power meter, she changed bike from a tarmac to a Colnago, so a bit of an issue there, but um, yeah, she said she says she's going well, she's pretty excited for it. She thinks it's steep, suits her, she's a lighter rider. Um, she says she got down to 48 and a half an hour, I think. I think. Um, so yeah, definitely one to watch. I mean, having won every single open event she's done, smashed the WTTA Hill Climb Series, um, I really think Bexy Jew could definitely do it. Um, Numbers-wise, I think she's she's right up there. Um, then we're going to go over to Joe Tinley, um, who again has had pretty solid results. Um, came second on uh, Bank Road, um, which is sort of a good one to judge. It was a similar one. Two and a half minutes at 6.6 .6 watts per kilo is, um, is very strong uh, for sure. Second one of the day as well, um, and it went off pretty hard to be fair, and then just just sustained it. So I think she's definitely one to watch. Um, she did then actually win. Um, where it, sorry, she won Matlock as well. Um, so here that was pretty pretty solid watts as well, and it's similar to what I was saying with feathers. It's quite a good indication because the first bit she rode at six watts per kilo for a minute forty. Um, well, sorry, a minute forty four, and this last bit is where you really need to punch it because it's super steep. You can see sixteen and a half percent for five hundred meters. Um, and she was doing six watts per kilo there, so maybe maybe didn't pace that perfectly. But even so, like I think she's definitely one, one another person to watch. Um, I think you know obviously she's raced she raced for UCI team, so she's probably going to be decent on the day, not get too nervous or anything. And I think you know the watts are looking good. Um, and I think Bank Road. The other person I want to talk about Bank Road is Becky Hare. I hadn't never hadn't really heard of her um, before this, but her time up Bank Road is is mad quick. Um, it's like similar to what the pros. So the the Tour of Britain. Oh no, the women's tour came up, I think is what its name is. And she came like the you know similar speed up to um a lot of the ones who are racing there. So that's pretty impressive. Um she was doing six point four watts per kilo for two and a half minutes. Again, second hill climb of the year of the day, sorry. Um so that's pretty uh pretty good solid from her, and I think definitely one to watch again. Um I think as I said before, Mary Wilkinson for me, I think is probably gonna do it just based on the watts per kilo I'd seen. But there's a lot of people I haven't, uh, I haven't really picked up who may, maybe aren't necessarily like um, pure hill climbers, um, you could say. Um, so if we look here, like, you know, Emily Meekin, obviously an incredibly strong time trial. There's quite a lot of cans to um are doing it, who are like stronger road racers. And it's like, you know, the form's pretty hard to judge, to be honest. Um, but I think, you know, going off what I know from the WT, like the West series, like obviously I'm based in Bristol, so I know a fair amount about that. I think Bexley Jew is going to run really close. Um, and if you just look at a pure watts per kilo, Mary Wilkinson is definitely going to be up there. Becky Hare, Joe Tinley, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I, hope, I think Kate McTeer could do pretty well as well. Unfortunately, Rebecca Richardson, she would obviously be a big favourite as well. But unfortunately, due to the Rona, she can't get out of Wales, um, which is not ideal. And as Lethbridge as well, it's got the current... Um, QOM, well, I'm not current, but she she won the test event, I believe. Um, so well, they're very well in it, at least. Um, so yeah, those are my thoughts for the National Hill Climb Champs 2020. 
Um, I'm pretty excited to do it. Shane is not going to be any fans, but he is what he is. Um, it's pretty good it's going ahead. I've been training since March pretty much when there was no, going to be no other racing happening. Um, it's definitely going to be a, a good one. It's just a shame everyone can't get there, etc, etc. Um, but it is what it is. Um, and yeah, so cheers for watching and we will see you in the next one.